this set of videos is going to be going over radicals, also known as roots. We're going to be doing everything imaginable that we possibly can be with radicals or roots. In this video in particular, we're going to be starting with the introduction of radicals and some very basic examples of these. So let us move on to the introduction of radicals. So the way that I introduced this last time is in math, there always needs to be opposites. So for example, addition has the opposite of subtraction. Multiplication has the opposite of division. So the last thing that we learned about was exponents. So we need to come up with an opposite of that, and that is radical or roots. So if we need to cancel out something to the nth power, like we see up here, something to the nth power, the way that we do that is we take the nth root of it, or the nth radical of it. So my nth radical and my nth root cancel out, and that just leaves us with the base on the inside, or that leaves us with base A in this example. So let's see some actual examples of this. And I have four of them here. Um, we have seen the basics of radicals before, so I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work these out on your own. So in example one, we need to come up with something that multiplies by itself five times that works out to be 32, because our fifth power needs to cancel out with the fifth root. So if I think of numbers times itself five times, one times itself any amount of times, especially five times, will just give me one in itself. So moving on to my next number, two, to the fifth power works out to be two times itself five times. So if I pick a couple of these and multiply those out, that gives me four times four. And if I multiply that out, that works out to be 16 times two, which gives me 32. So that means two to the fifth power does give me 32. So that gives me my right base. But what about that sign? Here I have a negative 32 on the inside. Let's try and take negative two times itself five times. So let me put negatives with each of these. Now if I multiply two negatives, that gives me a positive. So positive four times positive four, but I still carry down this negative with this two. So positive 16 times negative two gives me negative 32, which gives me the right answer. So negative two times itself five times gives me negative 32, and that's exactly what I was looking for. So now my fifth power and my fifth root cancel out, and we're left with just the base on the inside, which gives me negative two. Now, most of the time, I will be skipping this step, and I recommend that you do the same, because ideally we should be able to do most of that in our head. So I will probably be skipping this step from here on out. All right, moving over to example two, I have a square root here. So if there's no number in the little crevice, it's assumed to be a square root. This one is a fraction, but you just take the square root of each individual piece. So on the top, I need something times itself two times to give me 16, and that works out to be four. In the bottom, I take something times itself two times to give me 81, and that gives me nine. So if you don't trust yourself, you can always double check this by squaring it and going backwards. Four squared or four times four gives me 16, and nine squared or nine times nine gives me 81. So you can see that I have the right answer. And notice, just like I said before, I skipped this step in between. I didn't write out the step where it's 4 over 9 to the second power, and then that cancels out with my root. So if you can, try and skip that step in between. Now let's look at examples 3 and 4. They're very similar, except for the negative is in opposite places. On 3, the negative is on the outside, and on 4, the negative is on the inside. Well, my question to you is, does that make any difference at all? And hopefully you already know the answer to that question, and the answer is yes. It makes a huge difference. 
So let's start with example three. I have the fourth root of one. Well, any root of one will always simplify to be one because one to any power is always itself. So the fourth root of one is one. And then this negative on the outside, it just carries down from step to step. So my answer to this problem is negative one. In example four, I'm looking for something times itself four times to give me a negative one because here my negative is on the inside. So that does go in your power step. And the answer to this is kind of a trick question because there is absolutely no real answer to this problem. And the reason is, if I take any number to an even power, it will always end up to be a positive number. A positive number to an even power gives me positive, and a negative number to an even power always ends up to be positive. So the trick to problems like this is you cannot take an even root of a negative number. And for that reason that I just explained right there, anything an even amount of times will always end up to be positive. So my final answer to this is there is absolutely no answer. It's kind of a trick question. Now notice that we can have things very similar to this. I can have an odd root to a negative number. That's fine because a negative an odd amount of times will end up to be negative. And I can have a negative on the outside of an even root because that negative just copies down from step to step. But you cannot have anything like this, an even root to a negative base. So at this time we finish the basic examples of roots or radicals. And in the next video, we're going to be cranking it up a notch. We're going to be taking radicals of not only numbers like we see here, but radicals of variables at the same time.